Good afternoon everyone. Today I would like to talk about how Solar Cycle 24 started with an initial peak and then it has a higher secondary peak which is the opposite of most solar cycles except for Solar Cycle 5 and Solar Cycle 12 which both ushered in cold eras following the secondary peak. To the far right in the circle, you'll notice how Solar Cycle 24 goes from the low initial peak into a secondary higher peak, and after that, it's forecast to drop off into the regular cyclical 11 year minimum. But notice the pattern is usually a high first peak followed by a low secondary peak. This is the opposite of the norm. The last time we saw this was Solar Cycle 5 from 1802 to 1804, where there was a drop off after, as well as Solar Cycle 12 in 1881, followed by 1883, and then a drop off. Seems to be a two year window. If we look at Solar Cycle 24 in a little more detail, you'll notice 2012 is the initial peak, lower. 2014 is now the high peak. It should start to drop off immediately and then we are going to enter a cold era. A little bit further look back into time into 1900 you'll notice that every single solar cycle has the same initial high peak followed by a low except the cycle that we're in currently. Another thing that you want to take a look at is the total solar irradiance. This is from the University of Colorado Boulder. This is a historical total solar irradiance reconstruction. You'll notice that 1360 watts per square meter is what was experienced during the Maunder minimum. Now an interesting fact, notice on the very right side over there, they're at around 1361 and a half or so, but yet September 18th through December 10th, you'll notice right down around October 20th it dropped down to 1359, which means that's even below what the Maunder minimum was in their reconstruction. Another set of data that might be interesting for you, the asymmetry of north versus south sunspots. In 1884 you'll notice that there was an excess of south versus north. Again we start to follow the same pattern in 2004 forward, an excess of south versus north. A little bit closer look here, you'll notice the same thing, the divergence there between north and south by hemisphere. And to add yet another piece of evidence on top of, we are going into a cooler phase right now, is the north-south solar polar fields. There was a prediction made that the sun primer field would collapse and this would usher in a sun spot free surface and this would usher in a new grand solar minimum. Also the total number of days with geomagnetic storms per year is on a downtrend as you can clearly see with the black line. And it just takes a little more digging. You can find the Arctic geomagnetic field. Notice in 1800 the horizontal black line. The geomagnetic field is decreasing and we should start to match up with something around 1800. There's just so much evidence right now that the sun is starting to go into a pause, a cool phase, a grand minimum is coming right now. I'll leave you with this chart here. I'll stop for just a second. It seems to be a sine wave pattern here of two minimums followed by a warmer period, followed by two minimums, followed by a warmer period. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something out of the video. This cold type of weather is going to affect our grain production in the northern hemisphere. Look for prices of wheat especially to have a push over 2016, which will drive all of our food prices upward. 